Mm. Hey y'all, welcome to the Devon A. Morris Unfiltered Call-In Show. Have a seat. Let's get ready. You have any questions? Come on, come on, call in. Come on to that Discord channel. Do me a favor, get the unfiltered crew some finger snaps. We're ready to get started here. Mondays, 8 p.m. Every single Monday, we're here. I'm excited about it, are you? Let's get this show started, y'all. The greatest scrum show on earth. <laughs> I'll see y'all soon. Enjoy. Devon Morris. I, look, let me say this up front, man. Let me say this up front. I'm going to just start this off like this. Y'all a trip. Y'all a trip. How you going to talk to me, talk bad about me, have the phone on my shoulder? Huh? What you, what you trying to say, man? What you trying to say? I'm just saying. You understand where I'm coming from? It's all good. We got to do that a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> my name is Devon Morris. This is the Unfiltered College Show. We talk about agile, scrum, entrepreneurship, all that kind of stuff. Today's topic is gaining experience as a scrum master, right? A lot of times I run into people that ain't got no experience at all, and they always ask the question, how do I get some experience? Because they keep asking about experience every time I look, look at a job, rep, right? So we're going to talk about that today. Um, however, let me know, let you know what happens with the show for those that are brand new. If you've never been here before, you're about to have an experience, right? So make sure you, subsc- you like, subscribe. Uh, click that notification bell so and then you can join us on this journey. We got over a thousand people. We do this every single week and we're going to keep rocking, right? Um, the way the show works is really simple. We talk about the topic of the day, which is going to be gaining experience as a Scrum Master. We're going to talk about that for about 15, 20 minutes. About 25 minutes after the hour, could be somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes after the hour, depending on how we go. Then we open up the floor to answer any questions that you all have about Scrum. You can actually Throw those questions in the chat or you're welcome to jump on the show with me live and we can actually exchange and talk about it, right? Completely, completely up to you on how we do that. So it's going to be a journey. So first of all, let me get some shout outs. You know how we work and operate in here. If you've been, if you ain't been around before, you know, just say hi in the chat, right? Drop your name in the chat, say hi in the chat. Um, so I can just at least give you a shout out. Uh, that's what we do in the beginning. Uh, what's going on with me? Probably not a whole lot. The most exciting thing that happened to me this week is probably this right here. I got this back. You know, so I got this back. Some of y'all don't know exactly what that is. That's the first. That's the first true black comic book with with somebody on it. And then some of you all may be familiar with this one right here, right? So anyway, the point is, um, super excited about that stuff that happened. But other than that, man, it's been it's been a super busy start for me this week, right? Um, I don't have any classes today, man, and it just was all client work um, and just just kind of throwing things here and there and making sure things happen, right, uh, for these clients I'm working with. So just really, really uh, great day. Got some stuff to do around the house this big, you know, like put a flipping roof on the house. Um, but other than that, man, everything is, like, amazing. I've had such a good day. I've been up since, like, 3 in the morning, got up cooked, and uh, just excited about what we're doing here today. So hopefully it's going to be Hopefully, we're going to see how much you all participate, right? Um, so I'm going to say uh, hey to Alpha Male Basketball Academy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Even though you're talking bad about a brother, I'm not even going to be upset at you, bro. You know, and then I got people laughing. You know, I'm not even going to mention the names of the people that met laugh, but that's okay. I'll show them right there. Um, you know, nothing but love, y'all. Nothing but love. I really appreciate it, right? Um, and then let's see. Patrick, as usual, I'm good, bro. How you doing? Hopefully everything is right, good with you and the fam. Hopefully everything is great. Uh, let's see. Let's jump in. What's going on, Jennifer? How you doing? How you doing? Hopefully everything is good with you as well. Uh, Rajiv, how's it going? Always great. Uh, let's see. Hey, well, welcome. First live. Hey, man, let me let me go ahead and, and give you the whole There you go, right? Uh, congratulations on your PMP. Uh, I got my PMP like in 2005. So I've been a PMP for a long time. So that's a 
that's a tough journey, brother. It really is. I'm glad you got it out the way. Just make sure you maintain it, right? You know, I know people have lost it uh, because they didn't do what they needed to do. I'm going to go over and check, don't check on LinkedIn to see uh, who's talking to me over there. Uh, nobody said anything over there yet. Uh, well, maybe it just hasn't come up yet, but I don't see any, anything over on LinkedIn. So once again, you know, just make sure you say hi. So that being said, man, it's time for us to go on this topic, man. Um, so here's the deal, right? This month right here, my focus is, you know, those beginning people that's kind of new, newish to scrum, right? Especially the, the role of scrum master, right? And I'm a certified scrum trainer. And so I always run into people who are curious about scrum, absolutely brand new career changes. They're just kind of getting into it, right? Getting into the thick of it, right? And in them getting into the thick of it, they um they want to know they got a lot of big questions you know uh, people go in and ask me do i do resumes do i write resumes and stuff like that i mean i don't do any of that um but the, the curiosity is really around the fact that they just really want to have the opportunity and get in there and really um you know become a scrum master right at the end of the day but one of the biggest issues in terms of becoming a scrum master is something really simple if people go get the certification, right? Certification, two days, pass the test, you're good. You know, within two days, you can be a certified Scrum Master, right? Um, but when you go and start looking for jobs, most of them are going to ask for some type of experience. It's just facts, right? I mean, if you were hiring people, you would probably prefer people with experience, right? And so the question becomes, how do you gain experience probably in some non-traditional ways, right? And these are things that I have seen. Literally, I've seen these things happen. Um, I know people where it's happened with. Um, and so this is not something I'm just coming off the top of the dome and making up. It literally is. I've seen these things happen. It hasn't happened to me because, again, you only get one opportunity to be brand, brand new at something, right? Um, when I was brand, brand new at Scrum, you know, we was being, we was being rebels, right? And we was bring it into a company that didn't, wasn't even caring about it coming in, didn't want it to come in. And so we was, we was being rebels, right? And that's a very different place to play. So I'm not talking about in terms of you being a rebel. Um, so here's the deal. I'm going to start this list off with some place that's really important. Now, you know, this will not apply to you folks that don't have a job, right? But my statement is what you should do Count this as the first one, right? What you should do is start with your current role. Whatever role you're playing within your organization, right? Um, what you want to think to yourself is you want to find opportunities to bring those scrum practices, bring in those agile values and principles into the current efforts that you're working on, right? You know, I don't really care how big or small those current efforts are. Even if you only can get a wall for yourself to manage your own personal work, right? But start with your current role, okay? Um, if you have scrum type folks that's in the building, um, go talk to them. Go, ha go ask them questions. Go talk to them about using scrum as a part of their daily activities, right? Um, you know, see if you can sit in some of their, their stuff, right? Um, you know, I think that's a really important deal. Um, initiating agile practices where you can is also very important. Um, let's just say something really simple, a daily scrum, daily standup, 15 minute synchronization of a team. You know, I, I, I fly a lot. I've flown a lot over my life. And I've seen TSA actually have stand-ups, right? Um, you know, especially when a shift changes happen so that everybody's synchronizing on the same page. So I've seen this happen in many organizations, but what you have to do is start where you are at now. That's extremely important. Does that make sense? And I know somebody probably in the room has experienced that because, you know, I have several people that, that's likely around this show that, you know, didn't get a scrum job immediately. And one of the things I said is start where you're at right now. Um, I don't care if you don't have a job, I'm gonna say incorporate scrum into your home life. Just do it, man. I've done scrum with my kids, right? Chores, stuff like that, done scrum, right? 
And so uh, I use Scrum for my workout routine, Scrum Fit, right? Every week I start a brand new sprint. Um, I use Scrum to remodel my house, right? And so I found ways to incorporate it into my life. Um, but you can find ways to incorporate it into your role. If you have a current role, uh, that would be very helpful for you to at least get into some type of cadence, some type of rhythm, get an understanding of it. Uh, that helps you to experience something, right? The goods and bads that go along with the entire process. The next thing, which is something I always, you know, this, sec this uh, second thing is something that I always tell people to do. Um, but this can be a little harder to do because you don't have control over uh, the, uh, the, it happening, right? And that is volunteer. So number two is the volunteer. Now, some of you all are in churches. Uh, some of you all are in non-for-profits. Um, if you're somewhere where there is tech happening and startups happening, you know, that's a good place. Um, your community, you know, um, food pantry, you know, somebody, team, the people that's helping the homeless out, um, finding a way to volunteer and, you know, talk to them about, you know, you want to utilize this process called Scrum in managing the day-to-day -day things that you're doing with them to help it get to that, you know, help you serve the cause of the organization. Just make sure that you, when you present it to them, you don't talk about it in a way where you, you're the only one that benefits, right? Don't nobody want to bring anybody in where they're the only person that benefits, right? You got to talk about how you can benefit the organization. And if you can think how you can benefit the organization and you can present that to them, then you are actually creating an amazing case, a super amazing case for you to actually do Scrum as a volunteer within that non-for-profit or whatever it is, whatever type of organization it is, right? So make sure that you don't forget that. Not to mention, you can volunteer for, you know, Scrum Alliance, Agile Alliance, um, there, you know, PMI has volunteer opportunities, right? And, you know, when you volunteer and do those things, you can try to use Scrum in that process, right? Try to use some of the Agile Manifesto stuff in that process. So you don't have to just only think non-for-profits, right? You can think for some for-profit places, right? Um, you know, and I've known of people who have volunteered to help within their company when they've worked in retail, complete retail, and then over here in IT, they got something and they just went over there and shadowed and helped out and did all those kind of things, right? So really, I, I say to you, you know, that that's an amazing, amazing opportunity, right? Um, let's see. Somebody here, uh, Trellis says 48 and 48 has some volunteer opportunities every now and then. So, you know, just go look, right? There's always opportunities out there. You just got to go hunt for them, you know? Um, my, you know, my philosophy is, you need to be dogmatic about you want what what you want, and even if somebody tells you no no a thousand times, all you need is one sucker to say yes. <laughs> all you need is one person to say yes. You get one person to say yes, you're good, right? So find that yes, find that yes. Um, you'll be in a good position if you go ahead and get that yes, right? Um, number three, I kind of mentioned this already um, because this does involve volunteering, but join agile communities, right? Um, specifically, I'm going to point toward uh, Scrum user groups, meetups that exist. There are classically local meetups that exist. Even PMI, 50% of the PMBOK now is Agile. So even in that, they got DS, you know, Discipline Agile, DA, right? And so you can join a community, and hopefully that community is actually practicing Scrum in some kind of way. So join some Agile community. Um, I know uh, where I live at, Dallas-Fort Worth area, um, there's DFW Scrum. You know, I have done speeches at different places across the U.S. And with the pandemic happening, a lot of places went online. So it would have been a good time for you to jump in there and help out. So I think you just got to push that, right? But... Agile organizations are always looking for help. I mean, literally they are. You just got to find some way to be truly helpful with them, okay? Number four, right? Now, this might be a little bit, a little bit, you might be a little nervous about this one, right? 
But offer to coach somebody, offer to mentor somebody. You know, it, 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 you know the thing is, is that there's always somebody who wants to be in your position. And that's the way what you need to think about, right? Even even I have imposter syndrome at times, right? I mean, and I could be super, you know, like on it. But at times I have imposter, imposter syndrome. When I start a class, for example, I'm super nervous. I've done thousands of classes, but I'm always super nervous when I start something because I don't know if I'm going to be able to teach people the right way. Um, but the idea is that you have something to offer even as a newbie, right? One thing that's really interesting is that when you go to an Agile conference in general, the majority of the people at Agile conferences are new people. They, they're people that's been around, this, this is like less than three years is what you'll classically see. So one of those things, when you offer to mentor um, a newer person, newer team members, well, this is brand new, um, and, and, and let them know, I'm kind of new to this, you know, but I, I know I can guide us in the right direction, right? So we'll grow and learn together. So just offer to mentor and coach, right? I think that number four one is an excellent one for you to kind of move forward with, right? Um, here's another one that I know I never looked at, but I know someone who actually did this, right? Go collaborate on some of those open source projects. There are open source projects that exist. So you think about, um, open source projects that have developers involved. And those developers classically need somebody to help keep them organized, right? Um, you can join those type of communities that are open to have open source projects. And what you can do is help them with the scrum events, help them with keeping themselves, you know, going at some pace or getting into a rhythm, help them to become or to develop better as a team, right? Um, you can do that in that manner with an open source project because they're always looking for people to help them in some kind of way. So, and, and I mean, you're not going to get paid for this, obviously, but the idea is that that to me is a community that we don't jump into very often, right? Um, so I would definitely do that. Have any of you all seen these things, right? If you've seen any of the one of the five that I just mentioned, because I think I got three, five more, right? Um... If you've seen any of these things, throw it in the chat. Let me know that you've seen some of these things, right? Because it's really, really important. I mean, drop it in the comments, okay? Now, that being said, if you can attend or work with somebody who's simulating Agile, that is going to help you, right? Last week, I mentioned a wonderful fellow, right, um, Philip. Philip's last name is drawing a blank on me right now, but Philip does a lot of simulations of Scrum, and he's volunteering to do that for people who are new to Scrum. And I think that's a major, a really, really good thing to volunteer to do something like that, but I think it gives you an opportunity to gain that experience. I mean, the truth of the matter is, when I updated my resume, because I went and took that's Brandon Land class, when I updated my resume, I did it using Scrum. I used sprints, right, to help me get through, you know, at least the time box myself. So then I get first draft done and then a second draft done and then finally clean up, right? And I mean, that took time to do, not to mention research and everything else. And I, I, use, I use Scrum for that, right? But the idea is that if you find ways to simulate that scrum thing, and to me, finding a job is a good way to simulate it. And if you can do that with a group of people where you have some level of group accountability, it's going to help you out a whole lot. So make sure you kind of incorporate some simulation if you can do that. That would be really, really good for you. Um, another thing that you can do that's always an option and one of the things I will say to you is when you, when you, hmm, when you go to agile communities, and I said this before, um, classically in most agile communities that I've ever showed up at, there's normally one common person there that always shows up and it's a recruiter. It's a recruiter and recruiters, classically are those kind of recruiters that work for consulting companies, right? And so I would definitely get to know 
recruiters and see if I can do some freelance work here, some consulting opportunities there. Um, I, you know, I've seen, I, I know of someone who's gotten a little bit of work out of um, Fiverr. You know, people throw things up like that and people pay you a little bit of money for it, but is a little bit of money that you care about? No, it's the, really the experience of doing it, right? That you really should care about. And so you can actually freelance, you can actually consult. And I think those are good ways to kind of get you some experience. Um, the guy's name is Philip Marshall. Um, and I'll drop his uh, link in the chat. I, I did it last week, but I'll do it again. I'll make sure I look it up on, on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll drop it in the chat again for y'all this week. Um, you know, just connect with him and say, Devon sent you. Um, and he, you know, he's a good guy, man. He's really good. Uh, I love amazing people, right? So Philip Marshall, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and grab that real quick and drop it in the chat. But let's continue. Let's continue our little conversation. So I think that was number seven. So number eight, right? Um, I always have people when they're in class with me, they always ask me the question, as soon as they get that CSM or CSPO, what's the next certification I should get, right? What's the next certification I should get? Um, certifications for me are there for you to help make you more marketable, right? So by all means, get the certifications that you need to get. But don't get certifications for the sake of getting certifications. What you should be on a journey to do is number eight, and that is continuously learn. You have to find some way to incorporate learning into everything that you're doing. You know, for me, when you read some information that somebody else has provided you, then what you're doing is you're taking from their experience, right? You don't have to step into the same pitfalls that they have stepped into. And by doing that, you are putting yourself in an amazing and absolutely amazing position, okay? Because you're learning vicariously through someone else. Um, that's the reason why I love having, you know, a mentor, right? Because I'm learning, right? But think about what I'm telling you. I normally read a book a month, right? On the topic of Agile, Scrum, right? I don't do it these days because I'm in a PhD program and I got other books to read, a lot of other books to read. And so I'm learning about a lot of other things. I'm still reading a book a month, right? And so you have to be in that position where you're going to have to stay sharp on the latest and greatest information. You got to be willing to continuously learn. There was one organization that I work with where I, I met a scrum, I met a guy who became a scrum master. And then seven years later, he said he hadn't taken a single class. He hasn't done anything to grow his craft. And he wasn't a good scrum master, right? He just wasn't, he wasn't even close. Um, there's something about learning from other people that, that brings a lot of benefit. So I would say get into some actual cadence where you're constantly learning and you constantly learn, you'll be good to go. You'll be, you'll be in a great position, right? Literally um, is the best way that I can put it. Uh, let's see. Let me think about the next one here. Cause I was about to drop the link in the chat, but that link is too long. It's just shameful, right? Um, third, uh, no, ninth thing is get some feedback, get some feedback. Um, the reason why I say get some feedback, because when you do do this scrum thing and you're practicing it, you want somebody to tell you what you did right, what you did wrong. You want somebody to give you some tips on what you can actually do better. You don't want somebody who cannot constructively criticize you. You understand? You know, you know, so somebody say your communication skills is bad, that don't help you. What can I do to help my communication skills grow or get better? You want people to give that constructive criticism that will help you to grow. That's going to help you make every single skill better. Um, and you want your skills to get better. And it'll get better through that exchange. It'll get better through that exchange. Okay. And here's something that I think you should do, and we're going to leave it at this 10th one. I'll talk about them again backwards. Um, but number 10 thing that I think you should do. I wish I had done this. I wish somebody would have told me to do this, but I didn't know any better. Document your experience. Like, keep a journal. Keep a journal. 
you know, I tend to keep journals when I'm on site with a client. But I can only imagine what a journal would have been like when I started in 2005. Because here's the deal. Something that's really interesting is that there are new people like you, right, who are having similar experiences like you. And for you to be able to document your journey, for you to be able to document your experiences, other people can, and I'm not saying to share it, but imagine if you did share it, right? Other people can actually learn from you. They can, right? If they learn from you, then that's good. I had did a video where I really went through me doing two hour sprints, right? Um, and it was just the, the activity of what was happening and everything else. And it was like, almost like recording a digital journal and people enjoyed that video. They really, really did. But if you document your experiences, you can do a lot of stuff with that stuff in the future. You do a lot of things. With, and then one thing that you get to see is your growth, right? You get to think how you thought, you know, at a certain time. Still to this very day, you know, I came out of Chicago public school system, which means that when I went into college, I was a little bit behind on, on certain things. And, uh, you know, being a part of Rhetoric 101, they actually had me write a journal, right? And one of the interesting things that I wrote was a black man will never be president, right? And I've seen that come to fruition. I've seen that actually happen at this point, right? And so when Obama got elected, I actually read, I actually read what I was thinking at the time. And I understood exactly why I felt that way. Um, and for some of you all, it's that, it's that scene of him getting out of the, um, of the presidential limo and nothing happening to him, right? Um, so just a very different kind of experience, right? But I, I documented that, right, back in the day. So it was nice to look at it, right? Um, and then see where my, my head was at back in the day. And it was in a very different place. So I think if you journal, it will help you, right? So let me go backwards. Let me ask you all a question, right? Before I even go backwards. Which of these things do you think is the, is, was resonated with you the most? Whichever one resonated with you the most, drop it in the comments, right? Doesn't matter which one. Whichever one resonated with you the most, do me a favor. Just drop it in the comments, right? I want to know. I want to see, you know, what you like, right? Um, but going backwards, right? Number 10, document your experiences, right? Get that journal going, right? Number nine, get some feedback from someplace, right? You know, if there's somebody that got some experience and give you some feedback in terms of how you're thinking about the stuff, that would be a good thing, right? Um, make sure you keep on learning. Be on this constant journey of improvement. Like you're trying to reach this nirvana, this perfect place where you're in this zen mode where you know everything. You'll never get there, but you're on a journey to get there. Um, consult. Be a freelancer um, if you can do that, right? Take some time to do that. Uh, number six, uh, try to get yourself involved in some simulations. I'm not talking about another class. I'm really saying some simulations, right? If you can, join some open source projects. Uh, that'd be number five. Uh, make sure you uh, offer to mentor and coach people. You will learn a lot from mentoring and coaching people. Trust me, you really, really will. Um, join an Agile community. Agile communities are super dope, and um, they love new people coming around, right? Because then they get to teach you, right? Um, make sure you volunteer. I'm talking about more of the non-for-profit volunteering stuff. Do that if you can. Uh, your church, or organization that you really love and care about. Um, and then start with your current role. If you don't have a current role, start in your house, okay? If what you are is a mom and that's all you've been, start with, you, start with your kids, right? Start with your kids. There's always a place for you to start. And when I say current role, I don't necessarily mean at a job. I really don't. So let me see. What do y'all like here? Let's see. The volunteer thing, I always put that out there. You know, it's one of those things where I can't get around it. You know, just it. I always recommend that first, right? Because I feel like, I feel like most people, I feel like most people belong to some type of organization that they can give back to in some kind of way. The organization that they spend time at freely. And since they spend time there freely, they have no problem with helping that organization, right? Um, documenting 
documenting your experiences. Yeah. You know, you should definitely be documenting your experiences, right? You have, you're having some really amazing experiences with the folks that you're working on and the things that you could talk about could be very helpful for a lot of people. I'm telling you, so you need to document your experiences because I know you want to move up, move around and make some things happen. So you need to doc- document some experiences there, Miss White. Okay. Let's see. Join the Agile community. You know, if you really want to, if you really want to get connected, Agile community is the way to do it. Like if you really like the stuff and you really want to dive a little deeper and see the, the stuff that really goes down, Agile communities help. Yeah, boss. Um, that whole freelancing thing, I think is magic. Find a way to consult. Yeah, that's the reason why I like meetup groups because, I mean, I've never been to a meetup group. The ones that I went to physically, because the ones I didn't go to physically, I don't know. But the ones I went to physically, I've never been to a meetup group, a user group, where there was not a recruiter there working for some consulting company. Never in my life, right? And so for me, that's 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 a place where you can get some attention. Easy. Easy, right? Let's see. Okay. All right. So people got their stuff in. So, all right. We have spent our time here uh, talking about this topic. But again, those are things that I'm thinking about in terms of gaining experience, right? As a scrum master. Next week, we are going to talk about interviewing as a scrum master, or at least preparing for an interview as a scrum master. I'm debating on if I want to divide that into two parts. Um, but I think we're just going to start off with part one, see how we go. If we need to make a part two out of it, we certainly can. So next week, we will be talking about preparing for an interview as a scrum master. Okay. And then you all let me know what else you want to talk about in terms of this kind of getting your career off on the right start in terms of scrum master. Is there anything else that you all would like to talk about? We talked about finding a job as a scrum master. Today, we talked about uh, gaining experience as a Scrum Master. Next week, we're talking about in you know, preparing for that interview as a Scrum Master. What else would you like to talk about in terms of beginning your career as a Scrum Master? If there is something, drop it in the comments. If there is something, drop it in the comments. Um, because I'm debating on if next week could be just interviewing, and then if we'll do something different after that, or if we'll do two, you know, two interviewing things. So this is good. Now, we didn't spend a lot of time doing this, so I'm going to now begin the process, like literally, of opening opening the floor for questions that you have. If you have questions, the way that it works and operates is you can drop your questions in the comments. You can drop your questions in the comments. That's the easiest way for anybody to do this. If you want to come on the show live and have a real conversation with me, um, and as us exchange, you got a real problem you want to deal with, uh, then I would ask you to join me on a show. And I'm going to drop, I'm going to go ahead and drop this, that link in the chat, right? Most people, um, most people, you know, rather just ask their questions than the actual thing. So I, I'll bring this up one more time. If this is like your first time here and you haven't subscribed, come on, join us in the script subscription world, right? Subscribe, right? Um, make sure you like. Make sure that you click that notification bell so then you know when these videos are going down. But we always go down Monday at 8 o'clock. So you'll know, you know that. We go live, right? Um, so that's a plus. So we can we can actually jump in and, and jump into that for real. So let me double check here. Um, let's see. Learning to use tools. Uh, that could be a really good topic. Talking about salary could be a good topic as well. Um, feedback, scrum simulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are two good ones, Lauren. Uh Let's see. Learning to use tools. That's a good topic. Jira is an example. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a, did a topic about swim lanes at some point. So I think those are definitely good suggestions, right? So let's talk about, um, let me see, let's start asking, answering questions here. 
So first things first, Sharon says, how important is the PM role for Scrum Masters too? Uh, I'm going to assume that you're saying the project manager and not product manager, okay? So here's the deal. Here's the best way that I can put it. Do you really need to be kind of a project manager to be a great Scrum Master? No, you don't, not at all, right? So it's not important at all, right? But you got to understand this, okay? And you have to be real clear about this. A lot of times when you are going to a company, Scrum was born in IT. So you're likely going to be involved in IT. Does that make sense? Project managers in IT are classically associated with process. And so Scrum Masters are classically associated with process as well. So usually a lot of organizations think about combining those roles. Now, I will say this to you. The PMP is a top 10 sort of IT certification. It always is, right? CSM drops in and out of the, ten, the top 10. But a PMP is always a top 10 certification. And the magic combination back in the day when I became a certified Scrum Master was to have the CSM and the PMP. And then a lot of the jobs that I had was associated with project management to some degree, literally. Um, and I, and there was all, there's always this natural alignment between the two. And so do I think that the magic combination of today's world is a PMP and a CSM? No, I think it's scaling, like safe and a CSM. Um, but then I'd add to that the PMP too. The reason why the PMP can be really, really, and I say the PMP, but the reason why the project manager role is important is because the project manager does things to help teams navigate, you know, a good project manager. I'm not talking about a project manager that dictates, right? Um, and so you'll find a lot of things that I've learned as a scrum master, I mean, as a project manager, has helped me as a scrum master. A perfect example of that is the triple constraint. It's just a perfect example, right? Where did I really learn the concept of the tri triple constraint from? Working in organizations and from project management, period. And then once I got to the PMP, that strengthened it, right? And so every organization that I've ever been a, been a part of, I've been able to plot it. I've been able to deal with the triple constraint readily, even in terms of thinking about story points in a triple constraint. I know how to calculate every aspect of the, of the actual triple constraint with story points. I just do, right? Because I know what the triple constraint is all about. But where does that tough knowledge come from? It comes from being a PM. What do what does me understanding planning and budgeting and forecasting come from? It comes from me being a PM. Do I need to understand those things as a scrum master? No, not if you're only doing scrum. But I have to have those things because I'm dealing with metrics. I'm dealing with uh, people who want to forecast. I'm dealing with people that will not let us move any further without having certain types of information. And so for me, the project management skill has always been invaluable to my upward communication, especially to my lateral communication as well. Downward, not so much, right? So would I say that being a, uh, being a PM or having that project manager role is the most important thing that I need to have in terms of working with a bunch of developers? The answer to that one is no. But working with people outside of the developers the answer was it was very helpful. It's always been very helpful, right? And so I don't know if we're ever going to get around that PM Scrum Master thing, right? But if I was operating in the world today and I had to have three, and I had to have some certifications, I'd probably be CSM safe and um, PMP. Literally, you know, PMP is still top 10. Scrum is at the foundation, is the most popular of all the Scrum, of all the Agile frameworks. And then I would dedicate myself to working for a large company. 
large companies typically have more than one scrum master. <laughs> and so you'll have mentors there automatically in the organization. And so I would be trying, and then and then what is likely those large organizations could be using? Some scaling framework. What's the most popular scaling framework? The scaled agile framework. That's it. No question, right? And so I'm going to get those things and try to work for the biggest company that I can. Um, so and then I'm not the only scrum master in the building. So I can take time to learn, right? So I'm just saying that to you, right? That's another thing, right? If I was on a job hunt today, my job hunt would be toward big companies. This would. Big companies that don't look like they're going to fall apart. That's what my job hunt would be toward, right? I can hide a little better inside of them. But the scrum say you absolutely have to know anything about being a PM? No. Do I, do I think that it helps me do my job better. No, yeah, it does. Especially stuff outside the team, right? Um, so I really think it depends on what role you're playing, right? Um, I find it to be super valuable for myself outside of the team, but I don't find it to be super valuable inside of the team, right? So hopefully that helps, Sharon. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps, right? Let's see. Let's see what scrums what what soft skills are key for a scrum master. What are some trends in the scrum master? Ooh man, I'm gonna start off with the trend thing, right? And I'm only gonna talk about one trend. One. That's it. Do you realize there is an AI scrum master? Like literally, there's an artificial intelligence scrum master. I forget the name of him. But I'm going to look it up right now. There's an artificial intelligence scrum master, right? I'm going to say that again to you. There's an artificial intelligence scrum master, right? I mentioned this on the show before, right? And my statement to you is really, really very simple. And this is the best way I can say it to you. If there's one trend in scrum master it, within this, it, within almost any industry that we have right now, I would say artificial intelligence is exactly that thing. Artificial intelligence is exactly that thing. And finding ways to utilize artificial intelligence is going to be beneficial for you. There's no way that you are going to be able to get around that. Does that make sense? I just put a link in the comments, right? I just dropped the link in, in the comments of this thing called a spinach I spinach IO. And this is your AI Scrum Master. Okay? Now, there's not a lot that this scrum, that this AI Scrum Master can do. But it can replace some of your activities. And if it replaces any one of your activities, then you have to start, you have to start reinventing yourself. And so, I'm going to say to you, Trellis, this is really important, right? You said right there. AI is a hot topic right now. You should be right now as a scrum master. No, forget scrum master. As anybody, you should be reinventing yourself right now. You should be looking at how artificial intelligence is going to have an impact on your industry and figure out how you can put yourself in a position where you still remain valuable. My philosophy is very simple. I believe that the AI programmer is going to be the last standing job, period, right? And if that's going to be last standing job and none of us are developers, that means you got to at least be the next to the last standing job if you can, right? So you want to be really, really careful in terms of it. So artificial intelligence is the topic that I would say you really want to have. You really want to just dive yourself into that, right? Now, here's the deal. I think that I think the question you asked about soft skills, there's a lot of soft skills that a scrum master should have. Um, the number one skill that I would say that you should have is a combination of conflict resolution and negotiation. I think all of life is about negotiating. I really do. Whether you're negotiating a salary or you're negotiating with team members around getting something done or not getting something done, um, I think life is completely about negotiations 
And then you're likely to be working with teams. So conflict resolution is going to be important. So I think those two, uh, if I combine them into one, right? I think that's the most important skill that you need to have as a scrum master. If you can manage conflict, if you can um, find ways to help teams come to an agreement, um, you are living in a good place at that point because you're being extremely helpful for the team, right? And so I'm going to actually write that down as a topic because I think that's a good topic to talk about. And maybe we'll talk about the top 10 skills that a scrum, top 10 soft skills that a scrum master needs to have. So how about we table that a little bit and then we'll, we'll come back to it, okay, Trellis? But I like that. That's a really good question, right? Um, soft skills are your bread and butter as a scrum master and being able to navigate things is huge, right? Um, I walk into meetings all the time where I have to facilitate a group through some activity and having various tricks in a bag that you automatically can pull out is going to be helpful for you. Um, and a good thing about a good thing about this is something really simple. You can learn a lot of conflict management. You can learn a lot of conflict resolution and negotiation. You can learn a lot through master classes, through books. Like you can learn a ton. Just reading a simple book, you can learn a ton. And you can be way ahead of a ton of scrum masters because it's, 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 it's such a natural skill that people don't even think about it. People don't even think about it. But all the life is conflict resolution and negotiations. All of it, all, all, all our lives are that way, right? So that's good. Hey, no problem, Trellis. This is good, right? No problem. Um, let's see. I see two roles combined at the at, at a lot of times. Yeah, that scrum master role and that product that project manager is gonna be combined all the time. You know, the first official job title I had after I first did Scrum was Agile Project Manager. This is what it is, right? Um, and I did Scrum, but it, it literally the title was Agile Project Manager, right? So am I used to seeing that all day, every day, all day, every day. Thanks for adding that comment for the roles when practiced properly are actually quite different. They are, um, but agile in a way has allowed you to get away with forcing PMs into the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Organizations have definitely forced people into those roles, right? Um, so really, really important. Let's see, Patrick adds, AI is definitely going to eliminate all mundane, repetitive tasks. You hear what he just said? AI is definitely going to eliminate all mundane, repetitive tasks you perform in your roles as PMs and SMs. Perfect example, setting up the ceremonies, setting up the events, setting up the meetings, right? Perfect example of a mundane task. If all you really do is you, you're an administrator and that's all you really do is administrate and set up meetings and stuff like that, AI is going to overtake you real quick. It's going to take, it's going to do it real quick. And probably can set up the meeting faster than you. Probably can when it's all said and done. Seriously. So, literally, AI is a beast, man. Trust me, I'm all over it. I may even, look, let's put it this way. We will be talking about AI in the bankable breakthrough. 2023, um, you know, I should bring that up too, right? The bankable bank bank the bankable breakthrough twenty twenty three is October twenty sixth through the twenty eighth, where we are going to talk about turning your passion into profit, and one of the topics that we're going to talk about is going to be AI in this world of work that we work in, and I'm talking about AI on multiple levels, with you executing your passion and using AI to help you execute some of those mundane tasks. And then everything from marketing to helping you in the role that you do in the job that you do every day. We are going to talk about that. So we are definitely going to be talking about AI as a part of that event. It's a three-day event, y'all. 197 bucks is the VIP. Uh, 97, something like that is regular. Um, we are talking about AI. It's one of the topics that I'm going through now. Um, cause I'm definitely using AI on a level, on a level, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll share that with you now. Let me grab it. Um, 
you know, I, I've, I've been wanting to create a commercial about it, but this is the first. I just literally finished, when I say to you, I just literally finished another, another um, my, not finished it. I finished a term in terms of my PhD. And when I tell you that PhD this time, it just had me by my throat. It really, really did because I was talking about qualitative stuff. And then, man, it had me bad, man. It had me bad. So, you know, it's just one of those things where sometimes that's what happens to me. I get beat down a little bit. So this is my first real week without that on my neck. Um, and I've taken off. I've taken off the term. So and then I can really bring you what I need to bring you in terms of the bankable breakthrough. But let me get it rough for you right now. But literally, we are going to be talking about AI. It's, it's, it's going to be a big topic. So what you're going to get, what you're going to get out of that, literally, when I say to you, <laughs> like, seriously, and I'm telling you guys this because you're all here with me, right? When I say to you, I'm going to show you some things that's going to blow your mind in terms of the way I've been using AI. I'm going to show you some things that are going to literally blow your mind in terms of using AI. Literally. Literally. Okay? So, Bankable Breakthrough 2023, October 26th through the 29th, three full days. 26th through the 28th, I should say, right? Three full days. Be prepared for at least six hours a day because it's going to be. And um, we're probably going to also talk about um, your brand. So two topics on the books already is artificial intelligence and your brand. These are the two things that is definitely on the menu. Definitely. So it's coming. I threw, I threw it in the chat. Just know that's coming. And I only have so many seats. Um, I haven't been pushing it, but starting next week, it's going to get pushed. So just know that. And it's going to fill up. I think it's going to fill up. I think it's going to fill up fast, right? I had to push it out because I didn't have time for it. But I have several people registered already, so they got their seats. So Bank of Breakthrough 2023, October 26th through the 28th, is coming. No, artificial intelligence and your brand. Keep that top of mind. Just, you know, finding ways to make sure that you have your own time and freedom. Like, <laughs> y'all should y'all should hang out with me for a day. Like, you should literally hang out with me for a day. You should. You would, uh, you'd be happy. If you hang out with me for a day, you'd be, you, you become real inspired. Um, yeah, you become real inspired. Okay. I'm inspired by my first appearance in Spider-Man. <laughs> anyway. All right. So other questions, other questions that we have, right? So let's see. I recently tested an AI prompt, uh, specifically for PM and generated everything from business cases to charters, et cetera, in seconds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Um, Yes, I just boss. I shared the actual link. It's in the actual chat. It's actually in um, in the comments. So just grab it from the comments. Um, I got more stuff to put on that website, but all that stuff is going to start coming this week. I'm gonna start back to hitting it heavy on that. The day was just an all client day. It was like uh, <laughs> it was all client. I haven't had time for much, but the client was heavy today. Um, you know. So yeah. So yeah. So. Other questions, other questions that anyone has? Any questions about anything? I'm excited. I'm really, I'm, li I'm literally excited. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. I'm super excited about a whole ton of things. Um, and I got my time back <laughs> from this summer. This summer killed me. I've been driving in my truck a lot. You know, 14, 15 hour drives, man. It's just, uh, you know. And finally, I'm coming, coming down from that, right? So I'm kind of recovering. And, I, and the crazy thing is, is that if you know me, know me, I don't even go in the Discord group anymore. So yeah, the Discord group, uh, I would say that's defunct. I haven't gone in the Discord group in a year. The problem with the Discord group is it was too much for me to manage, right? And we we tried to use the Discord group we use it in a very unique way. We use it to help people, to screen people, 
and then get them on the show to ask questions, right? Um, and it was just too much. We didn't have enough people. And so right now, the Discord, the Discord is nothing, nothing's really happening there right now, okay? Let's see. Given the opportunity, I think I would shadow you for a day. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have fun shadowing me. I have, a, I have a good time every day. Miss Khalees. Yeah, you have fun shadowing me. Trust me. Yeah. I have good times. See, I'm scrum fit. See this? I'm scrum fit. I have good times. I mean, I have good times. But, you know, let's put it this way. I have patterned my life after people I admire. You understand? Um, my aunt owns a business, and she's worked out of her basement for 20, 30 years. That's who I patterned my life after. My mentor, my mentor, my last mentor was a millionaire. And in his retirement years, he was good. You understand? And he would give me advice, right? And so those are the two people I patterned my life and career after, right? And when I say to you, they 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 proud of me. They proud of me. They real proud of me, right? Um, I stand on the shoulder of giants. Um, and I love it. I love it. I love it, you know? So nothing, nothing really, nothing really crazy about it. Uh, that bankable breakthrough is October 26th, 27th, and 28th. So let me just double check and look at my calendar to make sure I'm not saying anything crazy. Um, but I need to, but I'll look at my calendar to make sure. But October, October 26th, 27th, and 28th. That's what it is. October 26th, 27th, and 28th. No, there's no promo code, man. There's no, Charles, there's no promo code. Literally three full days at $197. The only reason why I won't make it free is because every time I do something free, people don't show up. Every time. We used to actually offer Bearded Eagle classes for free, completely free, and people wouldn't show up. Even had some times with a certification. But when, when the Black Lives Matter class, when we did those, everybody showed up. <laughs> everybody showed up for that, for real. Everybody who knew, knew about it showed up. If you ain't know, then you didn't show up, right? Um, so Sharon, once again, those dates is October 26th, 27th, and 28th. So three, four days. <clears throat> and I, and I do believe that the price is, I'm going to double check the price to make sure. I think it's $97 for just regular ticket and 197 for the uh, VIP. Um, so that's what that is. So that's a good thing. NDFW, I would definitely enjoy shadowing. Uh, I'm in DFW. <laughs> so, you know, this is what it is, right? Do you have any groups you want to promote? for us newer guys to become a part of. Um, you know, what I would say to you in, in terms of user groups, um, the group that I have been associated with to some degree was DFW Scrum. Um, but I would just go to scrumalliance.com and look up Scrum user groups and find a local user group or go to meetup.com and look up an agile user group. And I think that's the best way to approach it, right? You want something local to you so and if you show up, you can you know, meet, really meet, meet people, like shake hands and let them see your face. You know, a lot of times being in this community, it's about people seeing your face. It's about people seeing you, you, you be around. Um, one of the reasons why it was easier for me to become a certified scrum trainer is because people saw my face. They saw that I was around. It wasn't like I talked to everybody. I wasn't shucking and jiving with everybody. Right. But the idea is they saw my face. They saw me involved and they couldn't say he's never been around. Right. And so it's one of those things where I think it's important for you to show your face to some of these things, because when you do that, it's going to be helpful for you. Okay. It's going to be truly helpful for you. Right. And once again, there's, there's no promo code for the event. It is the cheapest price that I'm going to make it. Um, I'm not going to raise that price. I'm not going to lower the price. That's what the price is going to be. Okay. Um, and I'm pursuing a PhD in industrial organizational psychology. So it's psychology in the workplace. That's what it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Trust me, I love it. 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 It was hard for me to take a, it was hard for me taking a quarter off, right? Because I'm learning so much stuff and confirming so many things in my head. I started pursuing that PhD because I wanted to argue with people more. Um, but realistically, I want to prove whether this Agile stuff works or not, right? We, we give all this anecdotal evidence that Agile works, um, but... 
I want to be able to show proof that it works. I want to be able to show independent proof, verifiable proof. If I've done it this way, you can go do it this way and it will work. That's the kind of proof I want, right? Um, and we don't have that. We don't have that. Even when people say it's case studies, the case studies is anecdotal. A lot of times people can't replicate those those case studies, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, what they, hey, tell, tell your mentor, Lee Arnold, hey, thank you. You know, thank you. Thank you. I like people coming my way. I mean, the truth of the matter is, I don't, when it comes to my CSM, CSM CSPO classes, for those that don't know, I'm a certified scrum trainer. Um, I don't advertise. And I'm, you know, I'm not trying to make the classes big. I don't need them to be too small, but I'm not trying to make them big either. Um, because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get, I enjoy my time with people. I really do. It's, it's smaller classes is always way more fun. Um, bigger classes I love too. But the idea is, um, that's just probably the way it's going to be with me for a little bit of time. Um, but you know, I had a whole summer full of kids and doing stuff with my children. And so realistically, everything is slow motion right now. Okay. Uh, congratulations. Oh, congrats. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of things, a lot of things to congrats, congratulate everybody about. So that being said, it looks like we've exhausted all the questions that you, you all may have. Um, one day I'm going to decide to sell this shirt, these shirts one day, <laughs> one day. I just can't, man. I just love my stuff. I love my stuff, man. I really, really do. Trust me. Anyway, y'all. This is always a pleasure. This is always something great. I always love doing this with you all. Um, next week, we're going to talk about preparing for that interview as a Scrum Master, right? Preparing for that interview as a Scrum Master. I think that's going to be a really good one. Um, I'm debating on if we want to talk through interview questions, stuff like that, um, and see how you all would respond to them, you know, would be really, really interesting. So this is a, this is a great thing. So I'm just loving it. So on that note, it's been a pleasure, everybody. Make sure you have the most amazing week possible. Don't let anybody steal your sunshine. And, you know, we're going to be back here Monday night, 8 p.m. Central Time, like we always are. And I will see you in a week from now. Make, make it a great week. I'll see you soon. Peace, everybody.